with the National Women's History Museum, we're honored to host this celebration for the first female Speaker of the House and current Democratic leader, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> On behalf of my board of directors and colleagues at the National Women's History Museum, thank you for being here. Please help me welcome Leader Pelosi and Nancy Pelosi. benefit from the increased involvement of women in our economy and in the leadership of our financial institutions. And in our small business, the national security of our country will be strengthened by the increased involvement of women at all levels, including at the highest level of our, our national security. Whether you're talking about the academic world, whether you're talking about politics and government, the answer to almost every, how can we do better, is one word, one, one for women, more women. Economically and in every way, the, uh, the involvement of women, whether it's in small businesses, in the entrepreneurial sphere, or to educate with innovation in the classroom, I mean, we really are, best is yet to come for our country with us more um, opportunity for what? 17 or is it 19 the CEOs of the Fortune 500 are women? You can't be telling us that the talent is not there. 
But as we talked earlier about money and reducing that and increasing civility, but a kind of a conversation where women um, can thrive and, and succeed, it's about making our own environment. We're playing on somebody else's field, I mean, whether it's politics, I've been supporting women, and as it was so nicely pointed out earlier, I wanted to increase the number of women in college. There were like 20 when I went. Now they're closer to 80, but that's still not enough. At that rate, it'll take us 200 years to get to parity. So we can't. We have, all right, we tried this incremental thing, two steps forward, one step back, five, ten steps forward, two steps back. That isn't working for us in the right way. So let us make our own environment, one in which women can have to be much more successful by that, by that only that elected politics, and at the same time, in full participation in every aspect of our lives with the uh, uh, child care. We've got to make it easier for women uh, to succeed. Not, not easier because we can't do the hard job, but easier because the, the arena that we are in has been defined by others for the purpose of others, and not really to give it any opportunity or power away. Nobody has ever done that, given it away. And they're not going to give it away now. And so we just have to go take it. <laughs> tell us before, but I can't leave the Sewell Belmont House and Museum without telling you again, and I'll give you the abbreviated version. You may not think it is, but it is. <laughs> and that is the following. When we walk upstairs and we see Susan B. Anthony and we see Alice Paul, and oh my gosh, how wonderful all of that is, and Magic Kurt, the women who came here, uh, and, and part of the clan, and women's party, and all that. Uh, first day I went to the White House is representing the Democrats in the House of Representatives. Went to the White House, been there many times, didn't even think about being apprehensive about the meeting. And so I go into the room, the door closes behind me, and as I begin to sit down at the table, I realized that this was unlike any other meeting I had ever been to at the White House. In fact, it was unlike any meeting that any woman had ever been to at the White House. Because it was a meeting of the leadership, the president, the vice president, and the leaders, House and Senate, Democratic and Republican, to sit down and talk about the legislative agenda. Now, women have been at the table, appointed by the president, and that's a wonderful thing. What I was sitting there was my power derived from the election of my colleagues, not the appointment of one person. So my voice at that table had a different authority for me. Lack of a better word. <laughs> so anyway, we go in the room, there's President Bush, gracious and lovely as ever, and and saying, welcome me, and blah, blah, blah. And as he's speaking, I, I really closed in in my seat. I mean, it was like I was really closed in my seat. I never had that experience before or since. Really closed in my seat. And he must have been thinking, what's going on there? But he probably would have been thinking that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all of a sudden I realized that on that chair with me, Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Alice Paul, Lucretia Mott, we made it, we were all there, Sojourner Truth, they were all there on that chair with me. And I could hear them say, at last we have a seat at the table. <laughs> We want more. <laughs> but I agree with it. Not that we need any reality on it, but we all know that we all stand on the shoulders of many who have gone before us. And that others stand on our shoulders and will continue to do so. As women advance, we want to have just a, a, something very different, not incremental, but kicking open the door to something much better for women. And, and, and in closing, and this time I really mean it, <laughs> let me just say what an honor is to be at the Belmont House and Museum. It's always a joy to come here. It's so strange.
strengthening, inspiring, and the rest. But isn't it great to be here with Rachel Matt? <laughs> and CEO of the National Women's History Museum. We are, we are often asked why women's history, and today is living proof, that we are able to preserve the stories of the Congresswoman, the extraordinary courage that she has demonstrated throughout her career. Elizabeth Cady Stanton says that the best protection any woman can have is her courage. So this. Nancy Pelosi demonstrates that to us every day, and we are so proud to have you in service to our country. Um, we are so thankful to Rachel Maddow for taking time out of her busy life, and of course, she's another woman of courage. House and Museum to Paige Harrington. We are so grateful to be partnering with you on this lovely day, and thank you for the beautiful weather. Oh, by the way. <laughs> and um, it, we are so honored to be in this house where so many incredible women have walked through the door. So we are always pleased to partner with you on events. Uh, Judy and Peter Kevlar, we, we particularly not least to each of you for coming here to show that you appreciate what women have been doing to break down the barriers for all of us and that you are here to celebrate women. We thank you. National Women's History Museum will build the first and only museum in our nation's capital, in a nation's capital in the world that celebrates women and the breadth of women's history. We invite you to support our endeavor and join us at other events in the future. So while England is celebrating their queen, <laughs> we celebrate ours. <laughs>
kind of hear an air conditioner in the background, but I'm here with Joan Wages, who is the president of the National Women's History Museum, the place that we're at right now where the event took place. Joan, really a wonderful and momentous event. Please uh, tell us a little bit about the museum as well as why this event is important. Well, the National Women's History Museum is working with Congress to identify a site on our next international wall. And we are working to preserve women's history because there is not a women's history museum in any nation's capital in the world. So it's very unbelievable that women today still don't have a museum that recognizes their history. And the importance of today is, is to recognize someone like Nancy Pelosi who has spent 25 years of her life in working on issues that impact women or, or are about women and that she has broken down so many barriers herself on behalf of her. Show this National Women's Museum on the Wall. How far along is it? Is there a site actually identified yet? We are working with um, Congress to create a commission that okay. would identify the site. All right, so that's the first start. Yes, that's yes, the first start. Yes. We, we've had some bills introduced, but um, but now we've decided that this is the best way to go. Well, I hope yours goes more quickly than the World War II. Yeah, Memorial. I know. You think that was only built a couple of years ago, and World War II was 50 years. Ago, so we're but they didn't start right after. They didn't, well, okay, all right. But so we're hopefully the first step is getting the commission started. Exactly. All right. And the existing location that we're at now. Yeah. Yes. It was so it has well a announced. wonderful history. It does. This was the home of the National Women's Party. The National Women's Party, of course, lobbied Congress and raised awareness to get the vote for yeah. women. So th this is a, a, an extraordinary house and represents um, many good and wonderful things for women. We're back. I'm here with Paige Harrington. She's the executive director of the Solar Belmont House and Museum. Okay. What does the executive director do? Everything as 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 it comes up during the day, from soup to nuts, that's what you do when you run a small historic site. Okay. So we have a staff, we have a full-time staff of four, including me, and we have wonderful part-time people and wonderful volunteers, but mostly it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And for our viewers, give them please a little bit of history. If they came down here, what are the hours? What would they see? The Silver Mountain House and Museum is open to the public from Wednesday through Sunday from noon until 5. And this is the Women's History Museum dedicated to telling the story of Alice Paul, the suffragists, and the National Women's Party. So we have all of the original banners and artifacts that the suffragists used when they picked up the White House and when they secured the vote. Paige, in terms of the event that was held here today, yes. it was, everyone seemed pretty enthusiastic. What was your take? Oh, it was absolutely fantastic. We were honoring um, Leader Pelosi for 25 years of service in the United States Congress, and we had the indomitable Rachel Maddow, who was here to um, give her some questions and have a very candid interview with her. And if you know either of them, you'll know that they're both a force to be reckoned with. And they just went side by side and had everyone laughing and crying and completely enjoying and being respectful for all of the work that Leader Pelosi has accomplished. There were some pretty good stories. It was great stories. They were great stories. Paige, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you so much, and please come on. We're back. I'm with Jennifer Kraftchick. She's the assistant director mm -hmm. of the Sewell Belmont House and Museum. Has a museum. Mm -hmm. And what's a typical day for you? Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> well, when you're working for a nonprofit, every day is a little bit different. We're always working on improving our exhibits. We do programs every day. Um, we bring in researchers. We greet our visitors. There are, uh, there's obviously always administrative work to be done. So we are we are always jumping and, and, and very busy. Now, this program today with uh, Nancy Pelosi, mm -hmm. wonderful program. What did it take for you to put it together? Were there Secret Service considerations, the press? Um, for the most part, actually we worked with uh, uh, Speaker Pelosi's office to uh, to coordinate the event. They they brought it to us and we were proud to, to bring it in. Um, they helped us with all of the logistics and then we certainly handled things on our side. There are always issues being right in the heart of 
Capitol Hill. Obviously, there are always security considerations, so that's always something to think about. Um, we certainly had a lot of press for this event, more than we're uh, accustomed to, and um, and we were just so happy to have Rachel Maddow and Speaker Pelosi here that actually it was a pretty smooth running event considering the number of people that we had and the amount of um, logistics that had to be taken care of yeah, beforehand. From my perspective, everything seemed to come off just like It was work. beautiful. So Probably good for your organization, for right? And we also can thank the weather for today. I mean, it was, was just good. such a good day. Excellent. Well, good. Yeah. Jennifer, thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're here with Kate Campbell-Stevenson. It was a wonderful event. Please give us your take on it. It was so exciting to have Nancy Pelosi here, who's been such a leader for so many years in, in, in our whole country, but especially such a visible woman. And Rachel Maddow, it was exciting to have that energy between the two of them and, and to really go through the highlights of how we can change our world more quickly, getting women into office. It was a very, I think you would say, a very appreciative crowd. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, Ms. Pelosi had a number of sort of interesting stories uh, to tell, and I was interested to hear how she spoke of uh, George W. Bush and her relationship. Well, I think it's so important for, we need to get back to the civility in mm -hmm. our country, and, and it's so important to understand that as people, you can be wonderful and, and respect each other's different opinion, opinions. And, She's so true. It's so, so important that we have this civility again. And it was good to hear that she had a, a good relationship as far as uh, understanding the personality of, of people and respecting them. I would agree. I, I was just uh, amazed to hear the number of accomplishments that uh, she, when she was Speaker, and President Bush accomplished together along the course of the Senate. Well, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Work together to make progress. It does. <laughs> It does, it does. Also, I loved her story when she, for the first time as speaker, came and sat down in the room there with President Bush and the other leaders of the Congress. Let me give us your take on that. Well, it has to be so completely mind-blowing for a woman to come in when you have all the men around you. And uh, she was, she felt surrounded by the women who have come before her. And, and how... I'm so heartened to realize that she she was thinking about that at the time she was sitting down and called the men down the meeting with the president. I understand how important it was and that she broke through that barrier. And hopefully now we can continue with those that movement of getting women in leadership positions. And Nancy Pelosi is such a role model. I think the thing that spoke to me that I felt good about it was that she acknowledged that she was standing on the shoulders of somebody who had gone before her and that there would be women after her that would stand on her shoulders. Absolutely. And that's why each and every one of us need to uh, try our hardest to work to our potential to make the world a better place and get more women involved so that our children and grandchildren can probably say on her shoulders we stand. On a personal note, I was somewhat intrigued that she was so pleased or happy to meet Rachel Maddow. I know you're involved with a lot of women's programs. What are some of the things that you have coming up that our viewers might be interested in? Well, I'm very excited about my new show, which is Women Back to the Future STEM. And I am going to be featuring my uh, relative, Louise Arner Boyd, who led seven art seven Arctic expeditions in the 1920s and the 1930s. And no one's ever heard about them. I know. Well, that's why I'm doing my show. And to and, and contrasting that with what women today are doing, I'm working right Right now with women uh, leaders, women lead scientists at NASA Goddard. So I'll be focusing on uh, mathematicians and physicists and climatologists and, and bringing to light how women who have come before us and what women are doing today and hopefully that will spur excitement for young girls to uh, hang in there with the STEM su stu subject, study STEM from the early years on and to go for their dreams if they want to go into STEM. Um, turning out science for the future of America is so important. It is. Young men and young women 
science is so critical today, we just don't have enough to hire them pursuing that particular subject. It's really, really important for our national security and our national We loved having you on the program. Thank you very much. I know our viewers are going to look forward to the program you're developing. Thank you. I'm looking forward to telling more about it. We're back. I'm here with Jan DuPlain of the National Women's History Museum. This event today, honoring Speaker Pelosi, Rachel Maddow doing the interview, 40 minutes of great questions and dialogue. Uh, it, it sounds like it was redundant, but how successful do you think this was? I think it took us over the top and through the hills. Uh, it was, and to know that her roots are in Baltimore, you know, that we should be very proud of this woman. And the fact that Nancy Pelosi, we have to remember being the first woman to ever be elected Speaker of the House. But she was three people, I mean, she, she was the third in line to the presidency. You know, the power that she held. And what I loved about her, she does it with charm and wit and grace. She's a, she's the perfect, for me, she's the perfect representative of women. She embodies all, all of the traits, bright, attractive, uh, and and her warmth and her relaxation, which I'm sure you felt, all of us felt that you know she's she she has her messages she wants to get across, and today she did powerfully about the importance of money being too strong of a of a, of a force for us in terms of elected officials. We've got to work that out, and I hope. Anyway, we've, got, we've all got to look at that seriously, as she said, and if we can bring that down, we can bring women up into running for offices. And she's always been a powerful speaker for women. She has always been a voice for, for women, which is what we've appreciated so much. Because what can happen so often is somebody moves up the trail, you know, they forget where, whence they can come. So, and she never has. So I think her acknowledging this group here, I think, as I understand, she only did four uh, events for her 25th anniversary of ce celebrating her service. One was uh, San Francisco, one New York, one Chicago, and one in Washington, D.C. So the fact that she chose the Sewell Belmont House in which to celebrate her 25 years in service, uh, I think was a great uh, honor for all of us, and we loved it. We love her. It was, it was a great program. I was pretty touched when she mentioned the first time that she went in to sit with the President and the other leaders of Congress about how that she felt she was standing on the shoulders of those that had come before her. Yes, yes. Well, I know, I think so many of us feel that, and we have got to remember, this is why I'm involved with the National Women's History Museum, because not everybody would know the names of Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Lucretia Mott, and Susan B. May, may probably know Susan B. Anthony, because we've done a lot of special. But uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott would not. And, of course, Alice Paul had a huge role in terms of the Equal Rights Amendment and played a huge role with the Sewell Belmont House, Sojourner Truth, and others that she mentioned. There are so many women in history in terms of the women's uh, movement but also because of the Women's History Museum, we, we've got on our website 300 biographies of women that you would never, Hedy Lamar, for example, being one of them, that was, we, when you trace back her work as an inventor, she was an inventor as well as being the most beautiful woman. Did you know, in addition to that, she, we think she, she was part of the uh, launching of the cell phone today. We, I, I'm aware of that. You mentioned okay. the, the website for our viewers. Yeah. What's the website that they could go to? Okay, www.nwhm.org. Uh, Very good. National Thank Women's you. History Museum org. Thank you very much <laughs> oh, for coming Oh, thank on you. The well, we appreciate you being here today. Thank you for coming over from Baltimore. Yay, Baltimore. Yay, Baltimore. <laughs>